How many times has this happened to you? You're going through a Nuzlocke, wiping the floor with your opponent, and then suddenly, they have a Pokemon you weren't expecting, and now, they're wiping the floor with you. Maybe it was the absurd level jump from Price to Claire. Maybe it was Ryan's double battles. Maybe it was Lance having three Dragonites. Whatever it was, I bet it was infuriating. There's nothing worse than losing a Nuzlocke to a rookie mistake. Here's how you can avoid that. First on the chopping block, your Pokemon are probably too weak. Let me explain. Alakazam is busted, and we all know it. But take a good, hard look at this stat spread. Sure, your eyes are probably drawn to the speed and special attack, but look at that defense. I ran the calcs, and under the right circumstances, Alakazam can be one-shot by Growlithe. That is bad. Imagine what would happen if you were a few levels below the opponent, you couldn't quite Oko, and they fired back with a stab Giga Impact. Now, Giga Impact is a bad move all on its own for reasons we will get into later, trust me. But for this example, it's just about the last thing you want to say. Now, it is possible to make a glass cannon work, we'll get into how later, but generally, you should go with a tankier Pokemon, something like Snorlax or Blastoise, that can deliver a powerful hit, but can also survive a powerful hit. Maybe you could even give it a Quicklaw or something like that if you really want to go first. The finest sword plunged in salt water will eventually rust. Sun Tzu, the art of war. Now, I have said it before, and I will say it again. Showdown's damage calculator is a Nuzlocker's best friend. From making sure you can Oko, to planning out just enough damage that you survive and fire back with a finishing blow, you always want to plan. And that's the next major mistake you probably make. You don't plan. Don't get me wrong, I know how tempting it is to go into a battle guns blazing and just pray to Lord Helix you can kill, but that's a really bad idea. Maybe the first few gems that would work, but after that, you need a plan. Make sure you have an airtight plan before going into battle. If you have to pray you don't get crit, you've already lost. Victorious warriors win first, then go to war. Defeated warriors go to war first, then seek to win. That's not all there is to this. I've seen so many people say that Nuzlocke deaths aren't your own fault because there are things like crits that you can't plan around. People who say that are idiots. Not only are crits totally something you can plan for, they're something you need to plan for. It's a 1 in 16 chance to have the damage dealt to you doubled. Most battles have enough moves that it's almost guaranteed you'll get at least one crit every major battle. One mark of a great soldier is that he fights on his own terms or not at all. There are two types of Nuzlockers in this world. Those who know the type chart fully, and those who do not. You want to be the former. I get that memorizing all of this is complicated, and sure, for low level casual play you don't really need to, but for Nuzlocke's, this might actually be the most important skill. Memorization. Now, I don't recommend that you just sit down and just try to memorize it on its own. That's a hard thing to do, and that's coming from someone who can memorize a 3 minute monologue in less than a week. Either figure out mnemonics, or just play a ton of Pokemon until you get it down through sheer trial and error. MNJTV also has a really good video called Every Pokemon Type Matchup Explained, and that could probably help everything make a little more sense, and that could help with memorizing. Link in the description. Know thyself, know thy enemy. A thousand battles. A thousand victories. Winona's Altaria, Norman's Lanoon, Sydney's whole team. What do these three have in common? They're all terrifying, not because of the Pokemon themselves, but because they can get insane when they set up. Dragon Dance, Belly Drum, Sand Attack, Sword Stance. These are some of the most powerful moves in the game. Ensuring that you always go first and you always Oko? That's pretty broken if you ask me. But there are so many people who completely ignore moves that can't directly damage the opponent. I've never understood those people. Setup moves, status moves, healing moves. You need all of these. In battle, there are two methods of attack. 
the direct and the indirect. Yet these two in combination give rise to an endless series of maneuvers. But we are not done yet! There's another type of move that people also overlook quite often. Priority moves. I've already told you about how in a Nuzlocke you should probably stick with bulkier Pokemon. The problem there is that bulky Pokemon are often pretty slow. That's why you should try to give at least one priority move to your slow Pokemon. Extreme Speed, Aqua Jet, Faint, Bullet Punch, Sucker Punch. All of these are excellent moves that are fantastic on slow Pokemon. Quickness is the essence of war. Now, there are two sides to this coin. There are, of course, the excellent moves that people pass up. But there are also several moves that people should avoid but don't. Zap Cannon, Hyper Beam, Skull Bash. None of these moves are actually very good. Zap Cannon has horrible accuracy and will miss most of the time. Hyper Beam will leave you open the turn after you use it, meaning that if you go down to low health when you used it, your opponent has a perfect opening to strike. Skull Bash is the reverse, giving your opponent an opening the turn before you use it and completely telegraphing your next hit. Just because they have a lot of power doesn't mean you want to use them. Bravery without forethought causes a man to fight blindly and desperately like a mad bull. Now this right here might be the most important thing you can learn from this video. Use proper held items. Most games have either a battle facility you can access before the end of the game, or competitive items before the battle facility. They're really good. Choice items to sweep gems. Flame and toxic orbs for guts. Focus Sash to make sure glass cannons can take a hit. And hey, if you can't find those, then you can always at least get berries and type enhancing items. A held item of some sort is better than no held item at all. Always, and I mean always, have held items. Sadly, held items in the first two generations are either non-existent or really bad. Because of that, you should watch this video where I explain to you what the best game to be your first Nuzlocke is.